Okay, Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi, good morning, welcome back to SIG 2004. This is Sedimentology uh, Part 1 Silicic Plastics, Lecture Number 6. We are still on the pro uh, on the topic of processes of sediment transport and deposition. So, uh, for those of you taking the course here at UM, I uh, just need to remind you, it's better if you go through lecture number 5 first before going to this topic. In lecture number 5, we've already covered this, right? So, this is a velocity gradient for turbulent flow. And what we have here is a graph showing a, a moment in time through a flow in a channel. So we have a bed here and you have water flowing through the channel here, right? And the, and the water has a certain depth to it and the flow has certain velocities. But the, the, the current speed varies depending on your depth. Right? So remember we're talking about turbulent flow uh, because uh, we are interested in uh, the flow of water. So in the top part, we have an outer layer and here the current speed is generally uniform. So it's fully turbulent. Uh, momentum transfer is dominated by turbulent shear. Uh, then you have a transition in between, the transition layer, where you have intermediate between partially laminar and fully turbulent flow. Right? So less mixing compared to the uh, outer layer. And then in the lowermost uh, but near to the bed, so we have uh, yeah, near the bed boundary, we have a viscous sublayer. Right? Here, uh, the flow is dominated by viscous shear and partially laminar flow. And notice that uh, the gradient for the viscous sublayer, the velocity gradient for the viscous sublayer, is very similar to what you get in a laminar flow. So, what you get is basically increase in current speed away from the bed. Okay, makin lama makin laju ke atas. Uh, as you get further away from the uh, base of a channel here. Alright. Now, today, you know, we're going to use this uh, concept of velocity gradients to explain today's, today's topic. Today, we want to answer this simple question. What controls sediment movement along the bed? What uh, we have an image in our in our mind, uh, right? So you have a river flowing, and then sand moves. But what makes the sand move along the bed? What forces uh, contribute to grain movement? All right. So uh, this is a cartoon just to help you. You have again the bed at the bottom. Okay. So that's a bed boundary, and then we have a grain of sand here. So we're zooming re really, really at high magnifications here. So that's a grain of sand. So this is just to visualize the different forces affecting the grain uh, uh, in the water flow. So the forces that contribute to grain movement include, first, we have what is called the boundary shear stress. It is shear stress, right? stress along a plane, uh, but it is at the boundary. Yeah, so near the bed. Yeah. Talk more about this in the next slide. Uh, another force that contributes to grain movement is lift. Yeah, lift force. Right? And so you have here the arrow showing you first the boundary shear stress. Okay, shear stress along the boundary here. And then you have the lift force affecting the grains. And then you have a force that resists the movement of your grains, which is the weight of the grain under gravity okay, on the boundary here. Okay, so these are the main forces that uh, affect uh, grain movement. Eh? You have lift force, boundary shear stress, and weight under gravity. So let's talk more about uh, shear stress, right, and how it affects. Uh, Green movement, boundary shear stress. Okay, so here we have a scenario, uh, and we have a uh, we have a flow here, and the flow is going from left to right, and you also have a slope uh, affecting the flow. 
So this is more real. Yeah? Uh, this is a more real situation where you have a slope. You can imagine like a river current moving downstream, right? So you need to have a slope and the flow is moving under gravity. Uh, so in this case, okay, so we have, it's, the flow is moving from left to right. It is water and the flow is said to be steady. And when you have a steady flow, it means that there is no variation in velocity or depth over time. So if you're measuring at this point, let's say, right, for let's say two to three hours, right? So it means that the speed at this point and this depth does not change. Sama je. Okay? Also the depth uh, of, of the flow also does not fluctuate during that two hours. So that's what is meant by a steady flow. Then uh, the flow is also uniform in this case. No variation in velocity or depth along the channel. Okay? So the flow speed at this depth here is going to be the same along the channel. The depth is also the same, doesn't change. So that is a uniform flow, it's ragam. Yeah, right? And also in this case, uh, with this simple case, we make it a laminar flow, just to visualize things easier. Okay, so we have a laminar flow, it's uniform, it's steady. Okay, so now this is the velocity gradient, and you've seen this already before, right? So it shows you the, the expected pattern, uh, zero uh, at the bed, and increases as you get away from the bed. So that's the velocity gradient. But now we add the shear stress gradient. What happens to shear stress in the flow? Why is there a pattern to it, right? So this is a pattern. Shear stress gradient increases with depth. All right. So it is the other way around. Uh, at the at the bed, it is the highest. Okay. The boundary shear stress is the highest actually, at the, at the base here. Okay. But shear stress decreases as you move away from the bed. Okay, so just a reminder, shear stress is the stress component in the same plane with a material cross-section, in this plane here. Okay. So, the pattern for shear stress is that um, you have a higher shear stress uh, near the bed, and, but it decreases as you, as you move further upward for, for a laminar flow. So why do we get this shear stress gradient? Why why is this the case? Why do we go from higher shear stress at the bottom and but it comes uh, lower and lower as it moves further upwards? So this is the relationship for shear stress of a flow in an open channel. Okay. So what you have here, okay, that's shear stress at y at a certain depth. Uh, I'm talking about shear stress at a certain depth, and this is uh, weight of the water in a block the weight of the overlying water in a block. Okay. This is going to be important, right? Uh, so you have fluid density, section of gravity, and this is flow depth, and this is the depth you're trying to measure from. Okay, here, 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 here. Okay. And this is the proportion of the weight acting down this slope here. Okay. So that's the slope angle. Now, let's try to visualize this. Yeah? When you get deeper into the flow, this block of water at the top here is going to be, get bigger and bigger, right? I have there's a lot more water above you, a lot more load. So it gets heavier and heavier. The water above you gets heavier and heavier. Notice when you're diving and, and, uh, and under, in, in the river, let's say, right? when it gets to dive deeper and deeper, you start to feel heavier in, in, in your head, right? So that is what is happening. But deeper the flow, the greater the weight of this overflying, overlying block of fluid here. The deeper within the water, the greater the shear stress. It's because of this weight on top of you. Right? Berat daripada air itu yang kita tampung daripada bawah. Alright? So, yeah. Uh, deeper, when you go deeper here, this value becomes lower. So, this becomes higher, right? So, you get higher shear stress. Okay? So remember that uh, the deeper the flow, the greater the weight of overlying fluid, the deeper within the water, the greater the shear stress. And yes, that is why you get this increasing uh, stress uh, when you get deeper and deeper, showed, showed by the shear stress gradient here. The, the, the highest uh, shear stress, the greater shear stress, is at the boundary where y is zero. That is zero. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, we can depth, eh? 
a position here, a vertical position here is zero here. Shear stress gradient, the shear stress decreases upward at the boundary where y equals zero here. The shear stress is greatest and is referred to as the boundary shear stress. That's zero. Okay, so that's boundary shear stress. And this is the force uh, per unit area acting on the bed which is available to move sediment. Now, this is important. Remember, we have sediment. We're talking about sediment, right? So your grains, your sand grains are at rest at the bed. So the force at the bed per unit area is the one which is going to influence whether your grains will move or not. That is why we are talking about boundary shear stress here. Okay, so that was for laminar flow, but we can use the same relationship also for turbulent flow, where we are more interested in. At the boundary of a turbulent flow, the average boundary shear stress can be determined using the same relationship as for a laminar flow. Sama je. Why? Well, because remember this. At the bottom here is viscous sublayer. It's partially laminar. And the gradient is very similar. Uh, the, uh, the velocity gradient is very similar to what you get in a laminar flow. And we are interested here in the boundary only. Right? Um, in the viscous sublayer, viscous shear predominates. You get the same relationship also, right? So weight of the water above and the proportion of that weight that is acting down the slope. Okay? And you multiply that, you get, yeah, you get the um, in this case, if y equals zero, you get the boundary shear stress. Now, like I said previously, boundary shear stress governs the power of the current to move sediment. It's very important. But we want to know when the grains start to move at the bed. We're talking about boundary, uh, boundary shear stress. Erosion and deposition depends on the change in boundary shear stress in the downstream direction. In general, uh, sediment transport rate, which is the amount of sediment that is moved by a current, increases with increasing boundary shear stress. So again, imagine the flow going from uh, left to right. So this is water, body of water, and the flow direction is here. Right. So at certain points, you can get, uh, as you move further downwards, you get an increase in boundary shear stress. So you get more and more erosion as you further increase the boundary shear stress. More grains are becoming entrained into the flow. They become transported. Right. But further down, downstream, the boundary shear stress might decrease again. And when that happens, your moving grains start to fall down again and become deposited. And you can get these fluctuating ero cycles of erosion at the position going downstream of a channel, let's say. So variation in the boundary shear stress along the flow due to turbulence leads to a pattern of erosion then deposition on the bed of a mobile sediment. Uh, boundary shear stress increases downstream, which results in increased sediment transport rate, which leads to erosion of the bed. But you need to remember, right, um, it also depends on whether the, this maximum boundary shear stress is enough to move the sediment. Right? Okay, so I'll stop here first. Uh, we we'll have three parts to the lecture. Right? Okay.